I think I, the things that were so powerful for me about Quakerism was having an experience with God. That really resonated for me. And silence. Because that which is God for me has no words. There are no words. I very much like, for example, the determination that says somebody believes in peace and has the uh, guts to say in time of war, no, no, I can't fight, I can't do that. I think that takes a lot. I think it had a lot to do with the people, that there wasn't really that hierarchy where there was someone talking down to us, but we could all share ideas, we could all learn from each other, and I really appreciated those ideals. I think the silent worship was also a big draw for us to be able to center ourselves and get away from our busy lives. I like the principles that I see the Quakers standing for. I liked the um, the focus on peace. I like um, I like that there is not an authoritarian power structure in Quakerism, and that you really you know that everyone brings something to Quakerism. I actually first started going in the 60s uh, when there was a draft going on for Vietnam and I thought that it might be a way to get out of the draft. And I went to a couple of meetings and um, really enjoyed um, the way it was done. Um, I also really felt the integrity of it and I felt like using it um, for my own ends didn't match the faith itself so I uh, went to Canada instead and hooked up with the underground and then didn't get drafted. And it occurred to me about three or four years ago that um, th that meeting that I'd gone to way back then that I had loved, they were like still doing them. A friend whom I really admired um, invited me and I just thought she was a lovely person and I was intrigued. She said, come on along, I welcome you and let's meet and let's come this following Sunday. And I have been here ever since. When we had our first child and still only child, and we're looking for um, a, a good daycare facility, we weren't happy with the ones we had found. I just went looking and I just happened upon a, a Quaker one and decided to uh, investigate. And we were just so impressed with the respect that they showed toward children. My first Quaker meeting was um, a wonderment. I do remember walking into that meeting room and feeling a power. And it was, a, it was a, a transcendental power. Um, my first experience was actually a second first day. So I went and joined the youth committee and we worked on a community service project for the full hour. I'm 14 and once a month we meet and we work on a project. Sometimes we'll work on a project for a couple months. Um, for example, in the winter we work to set up a big sale and raise money for the um, heifer project and we ended up buying like several flocks of chickens and other animals for families in need. And I just remember really enjoying being with the group and working on something meaningful. I just really felt invited into the silence of it and the sweetness of it and the gentleness of it. You know, I went there to avoid being part of the war, but while I was sitting there, I really felt separate from anything, anything like war. And to me, I think that's, that's my recollection of that first meeting. It was really, I didn't even have to resist the war. It was just, there was no war for that hour. Well, my husband has Alzheimer's disease, and at that time he was still living with me in the apartment. And it was difficult, very difficult. And it was getting scarier and scarier, and what was going to happen, and what would I do? And I thought, I liked going to the meeting. It was quiet. I could say to him, I'm going to a meeting. I'll be back in three hours, and I would go. So part of it was 
a very good excuse to, frankly, get out, but be with other people who understood and just sit there quietly, and I would think. We have a family of diverse ages, um, multiracial. We have one child in our family who's handicapped, and everyone goes out of their way to make us feel welcome. And what can we do to help you, to help you with your journey and your path to God and to the light and still help to support your family and the craziness that is a family life? And we have found that to be very supportive. Well, I think it's a way to, for me to be able to check in to myself because it's an hour, really a, a peaceful, beautiful, quiet hour. I feel involved, um, and I feel like I'm doing something meaningful, and it's worth my time, and it's, you know, helping me, and it's helping the people who are benefiting from the organizations that we're helping. I still wonder, what are those people all doing when they go in and they sit down quietly, and maybe some of them close their eyes, and maybe some of them hold their hands out? What are they thinking? What are they doing? How do you know when to share? Um, how to settle the thoughts. I guess all these questions about, like, how do you know when it's over? Um. <laughs> um, I remember it's a lot, like, what do we do now, like, going forwards? Um, if we choose to continue coming, how would we become a member? What other committees and projects do we work on in meeting? Um, you know, how can we practice Quakerism at home? Stuff like that. Also, the subtle nature of it. It's not Quakerism is not. It's not easy. It is not easy. Uh, it is intriguing and inviting and powerful, uh, and splendid, and magnificent. And I don't get it. I don't understand it. And um, that's that's a real come on. You know, that's a come on. I, I did all, and it keeps me coming back. Thank you for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every Thursday. We'd like to thank Philadelphia Yearly Meeting for partnering with us on this one. PYM brings Quakers and Seekers together in Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey. It's a network of spiritual communities who worship together, witnessing to the power of relationship and transformation. Find out more at pym.org. Thanks again for watching, and have a great Thursday.